Reactions on President Bola Tinubu's certificate controversy. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. I missed the Chicago State University certificate saga of President Bola Tinubu. There has been several reactions from various persons, like Kalu Kalu, lawyer of former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, pointing out the discrepancies in the certificate, such as a gender mix-up, a difference in signatures, high school graduation date, and supposed forged certificate and identity theft. Ahmed Tinibu submitted to INEC. He denied having dual citizenship, which means it does not belong to him. Then, the same document, oral deposition, says that the A, Bola A Tinibu, is Ahmed. And the document Bola Ahmed Tinibu submitted to INEC, he denied having dual citizenship which means it does not belong to him. Then, the same document, oral deposition, says that the A, Bola A Tinibu, is Ahmed. But the NYC certificate, Bola Ahmed Tinibu, submitted to INEC has Adekunle. I don't know where the Adekunle and the Ahmed emerge from. So, on the second arm of your question, of what use will it be in the Supreme Court? It is very, very clear that from the decided authorities, the Supreme Court has held that they can accept a party to adduce fresh evidence as long as certain conditions are met. And from what transpired in the proceedings in U.S. courts, that condition has already been met. So, as we speak, our law is very clear that a party at fault cannot be allowed to enjoy the fruit of his uh, illegality. President Inumbu's lawyer, Wale Afolabi, has explained that the certificate indicating female is as a result of a mix-up on the part of the university. And for the difference in signatures, certificates were not issued at the time of graduation until one applied for them. On another hand, former chairman at the Nigerian Bar Association, Monde Ubani, former deputy chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association, or second vice chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association, Monde Ubani, has justified why the Supreme Court may not admit fresh evidence such as this because their job is to review the decision of the court below and not to evaluate any evidence. Joining me to discuss all these reactions are more. Otumba Shagun Shoumi, PDP governorship aspirant Ogun State, and Mr. Felix Moka, National Publicity Secretary or progressive congress. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics today. Thank you. Uh, let's start with uh, Mr. Felix Mocker. Mr. Mocker, you have a very Akulian job to hand these days, I would want to suppose. How are you handling it? Uh, what's, wh how are you engaging your public, uh, at least letting them see the facts from your perspective? Well, the job is not as difficult as you would imagine. Yes, it imposes on our time, but uh, in terms of explaining <clears throat> um, our side of this matter, it's not that complicated because we are not the ones making the assertions. We are not the ones making these you know uh wild allegations about 
you know, documents that were forged uh, in the United States and, you know, um, in the country here. So, you know, our job is simply to um, clarify that the president, Asiwaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, contested in a prior election and was declared winner. And certain other candidates who contested, you know, being dissatisfied with the declaration of this president as winner of that election, decided to go to the tribunal. And they brought their cases. And on this matter, on that discussion, Alaji Atuk Abubakar contended at the tribunal that this president did not attend the Chicago State University CSU. That was the bone of contention. And the tribunal resolved that matter and put it to rest. But of course, as we all know now, subsequently, uh, Alaji Abubakar proceeded to the United States to begin to interrogate the certificates of this, you know, uh, president. And we know today for a fact that the CSU has since verified on oath that Bola Ahmed Tinubu was their student, undertook the program of study, and graduated from that university with honors. There's an affidavit to that effect, unequivocal, unmistakable. Now, those who choose to pick holes and still now raise a new issue, no longer the issue that he didn't go to CSU, but now that he forged a certificate. Look, it is their burden to prove, you know, to the satisfaction of the Supreme Court. You know, it's not my duty to, to do anything. They, oh, they should okay. go after they come to the Okay, okay Mr. Them, let, let me quickly uh, just tell, tell, tell my question with this. You may not quite have a lot to prove at the Supreme Court and it behoves, it behoves the person who alleges to affirm, but the court of public opinion out there, I would suppose, given your portfolio in the APC, I would suppose you know how, how lacerating that court could be sometimes when uh, one perception or misperception are at play. Uh, what's your take about that? Just briefly before I go to your well, colleague. I, I, yes, I, I agree. You know, that's why we're having this conversation. That's why in the past few days, since this press conference, you know, um, to the best of my efforts, I've been out there and some of my colleagues have also been out there uh, explaining, uh, you know, our understanding of this matter. Yes, we, we know the Nigerian public, you know, if they have questions, they deserve answers. And that's exactly what we're trying to provide. But that's the best you can do. Because people who are interested in peddling, you know, on truths, they will do so irrespective. Because their goal is not the Supreme Court. Their goal is to delegitimize this president. That's what it's uh, about. Okay. Let so, me, uh, yesterday at the press conference, that also came out, you know, from the from the mouth of the candidate of the PDP. But I will stop here so that you can you can ask uh, 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 for that question. Uh, I guess you yes, must have. Good evening. Good evening. I guess you must have read uh, Mr. Mocker's uh, 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 piece yesterday, a kind of rebuttal to the World Press Conference. Uh, but even if you've not read it, uh, you've you've listened to him, you've heard him. From where you are, what would be your response to his initial remarks? Thank you very much, my dear friend Bola. Thank you. Let me greet my friend uh, Felix Mokatu. We know ourselves for many years. I'll yes. start by saying very clearly that the most important thing I need to answer to is that is there a precedence in the Supreme Court as it concerns taking in evidence? And I think one of the quickest that I could easily bring up is the Judgment of Retired Justice of the Supreme Court, C.D. Dowda Baggy. And please let me read what he says so that Mocha and his friends can just be a little bit guided. The court shall take the lead in righting the wrong in our society if and when the opportunity prevents itself as in this appeal. Allowing criminality and certificate forgery to continue to percolate in the stream, waters and notions of our national policy will only mean our waters are and will remain dangerously contaminated. I repeat, dangerously contaminated. 
The preparation effort must start now and be sustained as we seek as a nation to now change from our old culture of reckless impunity. The Nigerian constitution is supreme. It desires that no one who has ever presented forged certificate to INEC contest elections in Nigeria. This is clear and psychosan, more compelling as a judicial determination as taken by no less a technical panel sitting and at least a panel of three at the tribunal and constitutional mandate to determine such issues as they relate to election is outcome eligibility. This has also been affirmed by a lot of trial courts. Also, I'm sure Mokka, being a lawyer, is aware of Section 137 of the Nigerian Constitution, which says that, and I'm trying to quote so that I will not be, I won't quote the judges out of context. It says, Section 137.1J of the Nigerian Constitution, you are not qualified to run for office of president if you have prevented forged certificate to INEC. Now, let me now go into some other areas. It is um, a simple narrative misdirected to say that the pleadings of uh, the, uh, what Article Africa and the PDP, let me put it that way, took to court does not include the fact that the forged certificate or that is not qualified and all of that. I think you will have to go and read what was pleaded up in issue. In any case, like I keep saying to them, I do not, and I believe, and I plead with every person around us in the PDP, we have not appropriated the absolute authority and the grandeur of the Supreme Court to ourselves. But let me beg this, our friends, do not appropriate what the Supreme Court can do or not do to yourself either. What uh, is the issue uh, at stake? Okay. The issue okay. at stake is very clear. I, I want to I, I, I want to put a follow-up question that's quite relevant to your submission. I, I, want, I, I wonder, given the copious passages of the Constitution and uh, the pr pronouncement of a justice of the Supreme Court that you've just quoted, I wonder if you, if your camp, that is His Excellency Vice President, I think what people can scamp if you really believe in the pervasive value of that evidence that you've just garnered from the United States of America. Why did you people organize that World Press Conference yesterday when in every material particular it could be said to be subjudice and you could be seen to be shooting yourselves in the foot? Well, um, you recall in one of the quotes, Atikwa Baka did say that one of the American presidents, very revered and highly respected, said if he had to choose government without newspaper and journalists, he would choose the one that has newspapers. Hello? Hello, Otumba? Is Otumba still there? Okay, uh, Mr. Moka. Yes. Uh, it does seem that uh, I wouldn't want to ascribe this to Juju or some, something from the village, but you've been able to, to get him off. I guess where he was uh, getting more intellectually lacerating. Uh, I, I wouldn't ascribe it to Juju. But jokes apart now, the gentleman just read out some uh, fantastic legalistic uh, passages. Uh, one from the Constitution and another from uh, a retired Justice of the Supreme Court. You are a liar yourself. And uh, what, what would be your take uh, on, on his submission and his reasoning? No, the, the passages... The, the nature of uh, Zoom meetings to have these fluctuations. Okay. But what I was actually trying to say, I really don't like Zoom meetings, I like to be in studio to avoid all these glitches. But be that as it may, you will notice that what we said was that there are two sides to a conversation of this nature. There's a part that the lawyers will deal with, and that's why we are always very reluctant to get into the legal part. And there's a part that obviously is a matter of public interest. And because our friends 
are quick at trying to, you know, throw in materials into public space that seeks to say maybe everybody in the country drinks from their, you know, their table of influence. And therefore, there are no alternative opinions. Uh, okay, Tumba. Uh, uh, the of the truth is the only truth. Was the reason why we had that press conference. And what we said there was very clear. This is why we've gone to America. This we got, we got there. But we stopped short of going into the details. The, the deposition is close to 200 pages. An avalanche of documents were provided. They are picking the ones they like. Maybe if you like, you can even say we are picking the ones we like. But the fact of the matter is that you can't have multiple names. They cannot disown your certificate. They can't tell tales as to how you got it. You can't be happy with yourself that just one human being's document has many coloration, many names, many explanations. Some of them extremely absurd. Uh, 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 Some of us have been all over the world. Every explanation, but the real explanation is the one they're taking. And the real deal is that we hold the view that that advocate is not authentic. And it is uh, okay. Uh, about, time, about time. About time. I went to your colleague. Uh, Dr. Moka, sorry, uh, you know, I, and thank you very much for being punished because you just allowed him to have his flaws straight when he came in. Uh, it shows uh, uh, a degree of polish in you. I, I really appreciate that because it could have been completely. No, 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 please, that, that's, that's fine. Okay. Uh, uh, but having said that, I, having said that, I was asking you, I, or I asked you, he submitted some fantastic legalistic documents or you read that some fantastic legalistic documents a justice a retired justice of the supreme court in one of his opinion in one of his rulings and the constitution and from the two it does seem that the that the phalange of of the reasoning of the supporters of the uh, of the president may have been somewhat uh, uh intellectually rubbished what would be your response to that no, the, that, that's not the case. Let me, let me put um, both things in perspective. Uh, the first was a quote of um, a, a judge, a justice of the Supreme Court, I, I imagine, um, you know, speaking to the, the need for the legal system and the judicial system to view more seriously the question of forgeries and distortion of documentation. Now, that is, that is a need. He was speaking broadly and generally. You know, speaking to forgery as a crime, not specific to any particular, you know, individual or trend. He was simply framing a legal issue to say that the courts will view that matter with seriousness. What you know has called what you know has called Obita. Completely. It was just them, it was not Sana here nor there. The second point that my dear friend raised had to do with the um the, the, the constitution that says that if you forge documents, therefore you are ineligible uh, to contest. Look, nobody doubts that if you forge a document, that there are consequences for forgery. That's not in dispute. I'm not going to debate that with my, my dear friend. But the point is that for you to make, to apply that provision, there are certain hurdles you must cross. This is a criminal allegation which you must prove beyond reasonable, reasonable doubt. doubt. It's not something you do wishfully. It's not an allegation you make and you just make it and it falls in place. No. You do not taint a man with guilt unless he is properly tried and convicted by a court of competent jurisdiction. In this case, I don't know how the PDP or uh, their candidate proposes to you know, convert this to the level of criminal inquiry that is required to prove but look, all we are saying is that the election petition tribunal that gave verdict in this matter, that is not before the Supreme Court, is a civil court. It's not a criminal court. Yes, within a civil process, you can also raise issues of crime. But even within that civil process, you are required to prove it beyond reasonable doubt. Again, as I said in the beginning, this is all the burden of the PDP and their candidate to establish and I don't see anything in the transcript that my friend also refers to. I've read the transcript. It's right here. This is the complete volume. I've read it top to bottom. I've marked every piece of it. And this is an affidavit, you know, given by the same registrar 
uh, Mr. Cal uh, Caleb uh, Westbach. Westbach. In, in two page affidavit, where he absolutely, you know, without any equivocation, made clear that this president was the student and graduated from the school and was awarded degree. M Mr. Mocker. And uh, Mr. Mocker. So they can go to the Supreme Court and actually make their point. Uh, uh, Mr. Mocker. Yeah. That's, that's, that's all there is. Yeah. Just let me be a bit mischievous. If this is as pedestrian and as mundane as you are making it uh, seem to look like, why did you don't write that copious uh, piece yesterday? You, you wrote you wrote an intellectual history. You wrote an intellectually stimulating uh, rebuttal of the World Press Conference. If, it, if, if it's not that, you know, if it's not that forceful. No, you, no, you know, you, but you, you, said, you stated the purpose, the reason, in the, at the beginning of this show. You, you were right on the mark. You said that there is the legal question which the courts must resolve as courts. But that is also the other matter that is within the court of public opinion. opinion where perceptions sometimes matter more than the facts. If you push this narrative that the president forged the certificate, even though that is not true, even though it's not supported by the facts, if you say it long enough, as they are doing, somebody at home, some innocent Nigerian, may begin to believe it. And there is, you know, it is imperative upon us to, you know, I think clarify and present the facts as they are. So you go to the Chicago, you come back home, there's no need to distort, you know, the facts of what happened. Tell the facts as they happened. If you if you must tell the public, tell it as it happened. Thank you very much. Let, 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 let me go. Let me go to the press conference was not truthful. Was a lot of distortion of the facts yesterday. Okay, about time I went to your colleague, uh, Otuma. Yes. Your colleague is asserting that the uh, the Ch Chicago. Uh, Excavations are simply uh, legalistic fishing of a sort. That even after that, the press conference yesterday could at best be said to be, you know, a festival of presumptions. And, uh, and some people out there are even saying, you know, maybe because I think we knew all the so called evidences he had garnered from Chicago would be going nowhere fast at the at the Supreme Court, he just wanted to further, further, uh, you know, galvanize a kind of uh, reactions in the court of uh, in, in, in the court of public opinion. What would be your reaction to to these uh, submissions? Dollar, thank you. Let me put it on record that this type of this conversation we're having is not the prettiest that I like to have, and it's not something I do with relish or I do with pride. My head is bowed because of the seriousness and the implication of the conversation. But having said that, the first thing you must let Felix take back to his friends in, in the villa is that don't worry about whether what we are saying is right or will be accepted by the court. Don't worry. That decision is that of the Supreme Court. I only quoted every day, you know, certain sections of the Constitution to let you understand that they are just pulling themselves. There is enough pathway for the court to take that evidence and we will provide it. That's number one. Number two, help me asking, did the university, either under the position or under when they were being cross-examined or what do you call it, did they ever say, one, that they they assert that that certificate is from them and that that certificate, they provided it? Or did they say they could really explain how the secondary school he used as the basis for his entry became a, a secondary school that did not even exist at that time? Or did they own the entry requirement from the other Chicago college which had a female, which they are calling typographical error? Did they also own the fact that the, in the deposition of some of the materials that is flying around, that the social security number on that particular thing belongs to another person with a similar name who happens to be a female? Did they say that the NYS certificate presented that has the name Adelikunle, which is never called themselves now, is the same? 
Did they say that the guy that is before us is also an American citizen and not a Nigerian citizen? Did they say that the date of birth is the same? Look, I have said it over and over and over. Let us not take the role of the Supreme Court. I do not want to take their role. But Felix and his gang should please also not try to take the role of the Supreme Court. We were disciplined enough. I think it was disciplined enough. It was statemently enough to say, after I come back from the Supreme Court, if they give verdict to me, okay. If they give verdict to him, okay. Why don't they wait? The only conversation we can engage in right now is that of the honor of the entire country. Ask Felix and his friend, where does this man come from? What primary school did he go to? Which secondary school? Is it the one in Ibadan, the one in Lagos that did not exist before him? When did he do his national youth service? Is he an American citizen or a Nigerian citizen? Does he have uh, how many dates of birth? These are the issues that you bring to public opinion. Oh, and it's on those issues I want us to discuss. Because to discuss the law, we have to wait for the Supreme Court. Oh, but they seem to be in a hurry to say that everything we're saying cannot be taken by the Supreme Court. And I ask them, are you going to be legalized on issues that are, needs to be morally discussed and flawed while we leave it to the court? If they get to the court... We will provide the evidence. They should not be in a hurry. Uh, Otuma, a conversation uh, uh, that has been in public for more than 25 years deserves to be respected. Otuma, I, I, I want to ask you a very personal question. You may answer or may not answer it depending on, on how you... Are you in any way, shape or form intimidated by anybody from any direction of the state? And, and, the, and, the, reason, and the reason why I'm asking is that a number of persons who ought to have sat where you're sitting now today, uh, one told me, Bella, I've had enough blowback bro since yesterday. Uh, one told me, and I respect that, uh, uh, Felix is the equivalent in the PDP. He says he's a lawyer and the matter is of judice and he wouldn't want to do it directly, but he suggested you. Uh, and I really want to thank uh, uh, the gentleman for that. But having said that, one gave me the impression, and I don't want to mention his name, he gave me the impression as though he has been, he has been intimidated. Has anybody in any shape or form intimidated you since yesterday that that World Press Conference took place? Well, what I have said to people who have brought up conversations of this nature is that cowards die many times before they are dead. And that it is not enough for you to be brave when there is no, when there are no strong issues to push. What is more important is for you to be brave when bravery is needed. It is not for lack of, you know, concern as to what is their attitude and their potential. Uh, okay, let me brain. let me let me put an addendum to it at, 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 like this, and the addendum would be. Has anybody said, I'm on your ban here now? Why are you uh, doing that this? Is, that is the most, that, you know, I, I, that is correct. A lot of people have done that. But what I have said to them is that the race of Yoruba people, of which I am a bona fide part of, cannot, in the, scene, in the seriousness of our preeminence and our history, allow the narrative to run in all corners of the world and within all the other ethnic groups that we are a people that have no honor. And honor is okay, let me get your call. Let, let me get your colleague. For others must be our attitude for ourselves. Let me go to your colleague. Uh, uh, Felix, I, I don't really envy your job, but you, you're, doing, you're doing it well enough. I, I don't see uh, any other uh, intellectually uh, robust persona uh, doing it better than this. But you will agree that... Um, uh, the, 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 the worst, especially in the public opinion, are, are somewhat uh, scorching. Am I right? Uh, no, not exactly. Now, let, let, me, let me say a few things. Um, you know, I'm being very measured in this conversation because I'm, I'm speaking to, you know, um, Mr. Shoumi, or Tumba Shoumi, that I have known for many years, and I'm trying to... But I would, I would urge that... Um, my friend will refrain from characterizing Felix and the gang 
and using those kinds of you know references i take exception because you know i can also take my gloves off and actually hit back really hard but you know that's on unne is unnecessary because uh, this uh, is not Otumba, i hope uh, 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 that is noted please because you know i i i want to have this conversation in a, as you know as respectably as possible now the point here is this you know, I, I'm, I'm sitting here just wondering why my friend is making these suggestions about the APC, you know, suggesting that this matter should not be discussed or that we are preempting or, you know, in, in some ways trying to prejudge the outcome of the Supreme Court uh, review. That is not the case. Nobody's doing that. We did not call a press conference. You did. We did not make an allegation against Atiku Abubakar. You made an allegation against Bola Metinubu. You went to the public space to throw down, you know, matters that you barely, you are just scratching and, and being very emotional to drum up, just to whip up sentiments and create this public narrative that this president did something that was wrong. You did that. You took this matter from Nigeria, where we have a, the fullness of the court system, to the United States to go there to, you know, uh, discuss. You did that. So... You know, why do you, why are you acting so sanctimoniously as if you are innocent and APC is merely just saying, don't, we nobody said you should go to a press conference. You called it. We only responded to what was said. You cannot possibly make these sort of outlandish allegations against a citizen. Forget that he's president. If you do that against me, I will come out, you know, charging at you. Because you can do that. And then expect that they're not going to give you a response. And when they give you a response, you start saying, oh, they're, they're, they're trying to you know, uh, prejudge. Nobody's prejudging. Okay, so gentlemen, the I say, gentlemen, I have said is that you are welcome. You already have an appeal at the Supreme Court, I believe. You know, feel free to go there and dump as much, you know, material as you wish. I have confidence that the judges at the Supreme Court I have the capacity to review anything you judge and apply the law as they understand it. I, I'm not speaking, I'm not trying to say anything about what they're doing. I'm only saying that you can present your facts, but after you've done that, you must also pause for the other side to present their own rebuttal. And then the judges will make their call. That's the way it works. Gentlemen, and that's not pre uh, regarding anything. Okay, gentlemen, we'll go on a short break. And when we're back, we still go ahead pressing uh, the emotional, the intellectual, the uh, moral hangers of this issue. And more, actually. Thank you.